Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thanks to everybody who has liked and subscribed my videos. Please keep in tune. I'm back today with the Stoger XM1 Bullpup, doing a follow-up video of my time with the rifle. Got some interesting things to say about this. I mean, spoiler alert, I like this. However, there were issues, but once the issues were resolved, I think for, for the money, it's, it's fantastic value. Uh, let's get into it. So first of all, as you can see, I've put quite a large oversized scope on here and uh, bear with me a second. I'm just going to flip this round so you can see exactly what scope I put on and I'll tell you why I put it on in a second. It is, okay, it is a Zoss 10 by 40 by 60. Now the reason why I put this on is because I wanted to initially when I got the rifle test its accuracy and at the time I unfortunately because of work I've only had time to test it um, in the garden which is roughly about 22 and a half yards and also I was mindful that I wanted to get a bipod on here and so I bought the Stoger bipod which comes in two parts which attach on either side of uh, the Picatinny and it's designed for the rifle but it works just as well on this bullpup. Now one of the first things I found when I use this and I've got my target sheets here and I also chronoed this is that let's talk about the chrono first. I put my FX chrono on here and I first of all tried it with JSB exact 8.44.4.51 and I put 50 51 shots through it and I found that this thing was incredible in terms of the regulator now as you can see taking 50 shots through it there was very little deviation 0.2 in fact so hopefully you can see and then I used some 4.52s, 20 shots again. The deviation was very, very small. And I then flipped, and I'll show you why in a moment, to some QIS 8.48 streamlined. And then I, I switched to some domes, except I didn't manage to chrono the domes. But uh, in terms of uh, the spread, the uh, essentially the uh, uh, power went down, but it was still shooting with minimum deviation. Again, I don't know if you can see that. Now, why did I switch pellets? Now let's talk about that and um, this is the thing that made me go okay once things get sorted it's fine but I had to get things sorted. So when I first got the rifle and kitted it out with the scope and I actually put a silencer on it first of all to try it out. Let me show you the groupings I got and then what I did and what I found through a process of elimination. Now the first thing I did was these are the groups that I first got. Now I don't know if you can see this. I've, this is where I started shooting five shot groups with the Jess B 4.51s. And my first few sets of five shots were like, even with a silencer attached. Oh, and to be fair, I'll tell you in a minute, but the silencer came off and I found it didn't need it. But with the silencer on, I was getting some good groups here and here. And then suddenly things started to go a little bit wrong. Now these were from one particular magazine and this and this were from another. And then I carried on with the same magazine. And again, I found some some deviation, swapped back and found, OK, things were a little bit strange going on over here. The, the, the grouping started to fluctuate, although from a chrono perspective, it was still shooting fine, consistent. So I thought, you know what, time to try different pellets. So I did. I switched to uh, the JSB 4.52s, and this is what I got. And then I started to get a, quite a varied spread over here and here. 
And then I switched to the QIS 4.58s and I found that I was getting tighter groups. I tried again. Let's show you this. Again, 4.51s over here. And then 4.52s again. And then QIS through the magazine. And then I decided to go single shot using QIS pellets. And I loaded up the pellets directly into the into the block. And I found that I was getting pretty much pellet upon pellet. And again, that's the, the reason why I put such a powerful scope on there, because I wanted to make sure that the rifle was shooting accurately. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick with the QIS pellets and see what happens. And then I found, interestingly enough, something was going array. I found that I try one magazine and loading up with the QIS. And this is by this time I tried the dome pellets and I found that I was getting pellet upon pellet. And then when I tried a different magazine, I was getting flyers and then consistent groups. So out of a five shot group, I was getting maybe two flyers and then the rest fine. And then for some reason it would go back to shooting consistently. Um, and then uh, I'd swap magazines and then get a five and a six, which was fine. And then I'd get the fit within the first five, I'd get a flyer and then the rest, because it's a 11 shot mag in 1.77, the, the remaining six were fine. And then rinse, repeat. This was a pattern that was occurring. This magazine, when I say this magazine, this particular magazine here was shooting fine. And then this particular magazine, well, not this one, but the one that I put in this bag and got replaced was shooting like this. Just a little bit erratic for my liking. So I took the magazine back to the shop and got it replaced with this one. And then came home and tried it again. And over here at the top, in other words, this group is with this magazine. And then this group over here is with this magazine. And as you can see, with the trusty five pence piece over here, and I know it's only 22 and a half yards and I'm using a, a powerful scope but I needed to test it, but essentially I, I figured out with the right pellets, um, this thing can pretty much get pellet on pellet, which is great. So again, first of all, finding out that the magazine that I was origin that came with it needed replacing, but one of them was shooting spot on, which is this bottom one. It is pretty much getting pellet on pellet. Now I've got, other rifles in my stable, which you know from the channel, where they pretty much shoot pellet upon pellet upon pellet, which is great. But again, sometimes they work straight out of the box with good old trusty GSB Exacts 8.44 grain. Um, however, in this occasion, just over here, these are the pellets of choice for this particular rifle in this instance, which are the QIS domed 4.5 millimeter, 8.48 grain. Um, I found that incredibly strange that the exacts, old faithful, I call them, they weren't favored by this particular rifle. And in fact, it's these that were favored. But having said that, I, you know, I can see why I've got, you know, uh, some streamlined and some domed. To be fair, I need to stock up some, some more domed. I can see why um, people are raving about the QIS in terms of why they're so uh, brilliant compared to other pellets. I mean, you can tell the quality just by, by picking them up um, and holding them. They, they definitely are a lot shinier, a lot cleaner. Um, you don't get that feeling of lead when you pick them up and you've used, 
you know, or shot a couple hundred through um, after doing lots of loading. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, they're quality pellets. They are, which in fairness, I mean, from a price perspective, they, they, they have shot up with everything that's gone up. But again, one can understand why you can understand it. Um, but back to the rifle in question, do I think this is worth the money and do I or would I recommend this? My answer is once you iron out the kinks, yes. I think for the price, it's definitely worth the money. But at the same time, be mindful that if you get it and it's not as it is out the box in terms of you, you, you're expecting a particular type of accuracy, you might have to do a bit of tinkering to see what the barrel likes pellet wise. Also, bear in mind that the magazine that you get with it might not like the pellets and also a combination of the pellets, the magazine and the rifle itself. And once you've figured out what's what, you might find that, OK, out of the magazines that you got, one might be better than the other, which in this case, I found that even with the replacement magazine, I found that the one that what this one that originally came with it is is the best and most accurate. Um which is great. I also like the fact that I mentioned this in my last video, that this is customizable. I did try the different grip over here. However, it had a larger palm grip, palm swell, sorry. So again, I was slightly further away from the trigger than I liked. So I swapped back. Um, but given a context of colour, to be fair, I liked the black on it, so but but you know I don't mind swapping back, but for the blue, but the main thing was comfort and being able to shoot comfortably. So I swapped back for that reason. This bipod on it definitely provides a great degree of stability, and especially considering it's a Stoga bipod, um, designed primarily for the XM1 rifle in its original form, but works just as well on the side Picatinny rails on the bullpup. I haven't put the cheek piece on there. I've left the cheek piece as is, and I've also left the uh, uh, the extenders on, on the butt pad as well. And another thing actually I wanted to mention was that this thing goes up to 250 bar, which is really great in terms of shot count. And I think I was getting probably from a full 250 right down to about 100 i think i got roughly 150 or maybe slightly more probably about yeah 150 160 shots um i should have measured that again just to be more accurate um but i was really really surprised at the shot count and from my perspective, that that was another thing that I thought, great, you know, it goes up to 250 bar, you're getting quite, a, you know, quite, quite a good degree of shot count from, from the rifle. Also, the other thing I really liked about it is the, the foregrip at the begin at the end over here, um, when you're shooting it, either standing up or even sitting down, it, it definitely provided extra degree of stability. Um, now, once I've done this now, I've done this testing and the reason why I put the big scope on there was to just make sure that I could get the accuracy and testing out of the way. I want to put a smaller scope on here. I've got a Veyron, I think six to 24 that I'm going to put on here, which is a little bit more appropriate for this type of bullpup. A lot smaller, making it more compact and lightweight, which is exactly what this needs to be fair it does look a bit ridiculous with that big scope on in fairness um but uh i won't lie to you when you put a silencer on the end of it 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 does look kind of cool um but as i said i put a silencer on it and then i took a silencer off it i had to readjust the zero but i found it doesn't actually need the silencer because the shrouded barrel that comes with it is is actually doing a really good job so that's another plus point for this particular rifle is that the shrouded barrel is really really good um doesn't need an additional moderator or silencer or whatever you want to call it um 
I'm just trying to think, what else did I find with this? I think, again, for the money, just comparing this to some of the other more expensive bullpups I've got, like, for example, the FX Wildcat Mark III. I've also got an Edgun Lalia, but to be fair, the Lalia is awesome. Um, and you've seen I've on the channel, I've got a Star, a Star Pro X Scout, but again, that's a different league altogether, to be fair. It's 2-2. And it's uh, a semi-auto shooting straight from the magazine. Different, completely different um, shooting experience. But as I mentioned, for the price of this particular rifle and for what you get once you figure out the accuracy and what can f make make it work for you in terms of the pellet that the rifle likes and kit it out how you like, I think you know, you're onto a winner and you can't go pretty much far wrong. So that's it for today. Thanks a lot for staying in tune and watching. If you like what you've seen, please like and subscribe and I will be back for more. I haven't been able to do this video recently. I mean, I've been meaning to do it for the last couple of weeks, to be fair. It's just unfortunately work and life gets in the way. Um, however, given an opportunity very soon. I've got some more videos coming up, so please stay tuned. In the meantime, thank you very much. Stay safe and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.